Good afternoon. This is it. We're officially in the finals this week, and the AFL just held its AFL finals launch at Toyota in Altona a short time ago. I was there. Gil McLaughlin spoke. There were a lot of AFL people. Um, there were some big names as well, and I'll get to that shortly. This weekend's game's now close to being sold out. I think Brisbane's close to a sellout. Friday night, seventy to 80,000 now expected at the MCG. There are a few tickets available for Melbourne, Sydney. Geelong, Collingwood is sold out on Sunday afternoon, and the game in West Coast at the moment is sold out as well. So expect some official announcements in that regard from the AFL this week. Now, the AFL has just announced the Premiership Cup ambassador, which is three-time Richmond superstar Basher Hawley. The Norm Smith medalist will be presented by Nathan Buckley. The AFL announced a short time ago, Jordan Lewis, a Premiership Cup Tour ambassador. The Cup Tour will obviously encompass the Northern Territory, Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria. There are a few tickets available for Friday night, but as I mentioned, the round is now close to a sellout. Gil was asked some news points as part of that news conference late this morning. He supported, in summary, the pre-finals buy. Reckons it's a good showcase for the AFLW. It's a great way of getting some of the superstars of the game fit and ready for the finals. Also good for uh, people's involvement in community footy as well. You can get stuck in the community footy over the weekend and then gear up for the finals this coming week. The AFL also reckoned that the pre-finals buy helps build the excitement as part of the finals. If you're think of go- thinking of going to the um, pre-grand final parade, of course, that will be on the Yarra this year. Jet skis are off limits, but the players will be on barges, Gill reckons, or some type of boating activity. He didn't specify exactly what type. He said some type of boat that Queen Elizabeth was once on could feature. Anyway, no jet skis, but the players will go down the Yarra. Of course, that will conclude in Yarra Park outside Gate 3 on the public holiday before the grand final. Connor McKenna, the talented Irish fast defender, could return to the AFL. I got the heads up on this this morning from one of my men that uh, closely follows the Gaelic situation and the reports out of the Gaelic football uh, this morning was that Connor had given official notification to Tyrone that he intended to go back to Australia, having returned to Ireland in late 2020 to help Tyrone win the All-Ireland in 2021. This is being touted as big news over there as a big blow for Tyrone, but it could be a big boost for one of our clubs because there's a couple of clubs I'm told interested. I'm working on which clubs they are today. I'll update our social channels in that regard once I find out. Connor doesn't need to make an official decision regarding coming back until probably pretty close to the end of November because that's when the supplement, the SSP, the supplementary selection period, allows players to decide. So Connor McKenna at the moment considering a return to the AFL and uh, there's at least a couple of clubs interested in Connor. I mentioned Jordan Lewis on the Premiership Cup Tour for the AFL. He's also got four kids, Jordan Lewis, and obviously his Fox commitments and helping the Bombers out select their new coach, part of that panel, an official part of the Bombers panel, obviously through his contact with brilliant coaches of the past, like Alistair Clarkson, and obviously his relationship with Josh Marnie, which I imagine would have been through their Melbourne link. But Jordan Lewis, part of that. But Essendon's coaching search now ramping up. In terms of, I guess, the big question with this search... One big question is James Hurd. James Hurd's currently considering whether he wants to throw his hat into the ring, at least on an official basis, into that formal search. The other big one is David Barham's comments and what it means regarding looking for experience. Now, David Barham seems to be leaning towards a Ross Lyon type, someone who's had actual coaching experience. Of course, you narrow the pool if you do that, and there's lots of other coaches that have got experience, like Adam Uze, albeit in an assistant capacity. And I asked Jordan Lewis about that late this morning. From my point of view, I think it's important to come in with a really open mind in terms of who may apply for the job and who may also secure the job in the end. Um, experience is, is great and it's probably a club that, that needs an experience, whether it be a senior coach or an AFL assistant coach. Um, but me personally, I'll be as open-minded as I possibly can in terms of the applicants that apply and also who we may select in the end. The Pies had a session this morning, just a light one, in at uh, HQ, the AIA Centre. 100,000 members, Collingwood's announced. I think their previous benchmark or record was around 82 or 83,000 members. They've officially, I think it's who AFL ordered it, announced 800,000 members for this year, which was one of their aims at the start of the year. The Magpie Army certainly been out in force. They're also the most uh, watched club on television, I understand, according to a lot of metrics, and also have the most spectators in terms of attendance. So it's been a huge achievement by Collingwood fans who have enjoyed, no doubt, this ride this season. Now, Taylor Adams is the big one in terms of whether he'll play this week. He's told reporters, Collingwood had an open session this morning in terms of some media, a number of players speaking. 
Taylor telling reporters that he will be right to go this weekend with that groin complaint. So it's hugely significant against Geelong. We're obviously sweating on the fitness of Jeremy Cameron. But Taylor Adams telling reporters today that he's right to go for Saturday Twilight, 4.30 MCG against the Cats. And just a few in brief. Nat Yanides, who doesn't work with us on Triple M, has been working with Sevens Day and reported that Bailey Smith had another light session out at the Witten Oval at Bulldogs HQ this morning. So he didn't train Friday. Smith had a lighter session today. They're aiming for his main session, which according to the Bulldogs will be a OK to be Wednesday. So just keep an eye on that this week. Bailey Smith, a final superstar. The Dogs will be desperate for him to be fully fit. It does sound like he's being managed in some capacity. I mentioned support from the AFL for the pre-finals buy today from Gil McLaughlin. Just some other news items from that. There's a lot of discussion at the moment regarding whether fans will get free-to-air access on the weekends, in particular Saturday, just to explain whether Saturday would be all behind the paywall on Fox as part of the new TV deal, or whether you could see that on free-to-air. In the background, all that's pretty complicated, but the crux is the government is working on some guaranteed free-to-air legislation at the moment, and Gil McLaughlin absolutely gave an assurance today that the free-to-air, that's you can watch it for free, basically, the footy, would be a cornerstone of the new TV deal. He was also asked about Tasmania. There's still no date. On a vote for Tasmania, August is almost over. It was meant to be in August. The AFL now trying to tee up September. In the background, as I mentioned on the podcast on Friday, I'm told they're trying to tee up also some additional money from Tasmania in that regard at the moment. Tasmania had committed $10 million a year. The AFL think that should be a bit more. Alastair Clarkson also weighing into that over the weekend amongst making all these changes at North Melbourne. Stay in your lane, Alistair. <laughs> Only joking. Anyway, it's obviously been a uh, big, big week. Of, well, it's going to be a huge week of news. I'll be in Brisbane on Wednesday. I'll bring you all the latest from up there at the Gabba on our Thursday podcast. Also a massive Friday podcast as well. Triple M, Racks Football. That was Tom Brown's news. Come back every Monday, Thursday and Friday for more and subscribe to Triple M Footy on Listener or wherever you listen to get all our podcasts throughout the season. For Reem Hot Water and McDonald's, Triple M rocks footy.